Hi there, my name is Joey Mullen and welcome to my channel. This is Joey. And Joey loves to build his own aquariums. To keep what? Well, let me show you. Hi, my name's Aaron and welcome to Aquadox. The aquarium trade is huge, worth between 15 and 30 billion US dollars and with thousands of marine and freshwater livestock being traded annually. By some estimates, 12.5 million US households have freshwater aquariums. And that's just in the US. Aquariums can vary widely from small nano tanks to monster tanks capable of holding anything from large Asian arowanas to sharks. Their design can also differ greatly. Some tanks hold miniature coral reefs, while others hold dense forests of plants. A biotope is my personal favorite, only holding species from a specific geographical location. Aquariums are an art form, and the possibilities are endless. Which brings me to this guy. This is Joey from Turo, Nova Scotia. And Joey likes stingrays. Why is this important? Well, Joey has always had a passion for aquarium keeping, finding peace and comfort in the hobby while quenching his curiosity for aquatic life. Stingrays need large tanks, and unfortunately, many local stores don't sell the necessary equipment to keep them. So, Joey built one. Yes, he built the tank and the other equipment. He's a self-taught DIY aquarist and quite a famous one at that, having well over 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube as the king of DIY. Although he never thought his videos would be an international hit, after 12 years on YouTube, he has had millions of views and had a video hit the number one trending video on the entire platform. Joey considers his audience to be the general public and wanted to create enjoyable content for everyone while inspiring and educating aquarists and those interested in what he does. He likes to make aquariums accessible by showcasing species and techniques that anyone can use or do, especially with building DIY tanks and equipment. Welcome to the aquarium gallery, holding between 4,000 and 5,000 gallons worth of freshwater and saltwater aquariums. Everything from his freshwater stingrays to Asian arowanas and African cichlids. A lot of Joey's aquaria are DIY, being built from materials such as acrylic, glass, and plywood. He builds his projects three times total, twice as practice builds to make sure that the project works, and then a third for the camera. Joey focuses on the fish keeping aspects of aquariums, making the fish the centerpiece rather than the aquascape. Like other aquaria, Joey runs a closed recirculating aquarium system for all of his tanks. He uses four primary types of filtration, internal sponge filters, power or hang on the back filters, canisters, and finally sumps for those larger systems. He also uses a wide variety of equipment, depending on the needs of the stock. Heaters, CO2 diffusers and atomizers, water pumps, protein skimmers, reactors, and powerful lights for corals and live plants. What happens when fish get too big? Well, Joey can rehome them to a larger aquarium, giving us more awesome DIY content, or also give them to contacts who have larger tanks. He's also quite adept at surgeries and has performed multi multiple, including on his Asian arowana. He also once bred discus professionally, but now prefers to focus on raising the aquarium fish rather than breeding them. However, some of his cichlids still breed in his aquaria. Some key information, learn the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is a natural biogeochemical cycle that involves the movement of different nitrogen-based molecules through abiotic and biotic pools. The section of the cycle that we will focus on is the conversion of ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. The process is called nitrification and it occurs twice, stage one to convert ammonia to nitrite and then stage two for nitrite to nitrate. These conversions are carried out by bacteria. When we cycle an aquarium, we are actually growing the nitrifying bacteria in the aquarium and ensuring that there is enough to allow for proper ammonia conversion. You can add biological bacterial supplements to the aquarium to jumpstart the growth. Fish produce ammonia as waste, and it is very toxic to them, so the bacteria is very important for making the aquarium more hospitable. Plants use nitrates as nutrients, which promotes growth. If we understand the nitrogen cycle in the aquarium and test for ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate regularly, we can determine if the cycle is functioning properly and converting harmful waste efficiently. 
Now, let's see how Joey builds one of his DIY tanks. We are going to focus on a 375 gallon planted aquarium. The process may take some patience, but the results are well worth it. So first, choose your species you wish to house. Base the tank off of that intention to build a functional ecosystem for your stock and pick a proper size. Keeping a stingray in a 10 gallon is not recommended. You can research how big in a tank needs to be for your chosen species. The type of organism you wish to keep in the aquarium will determine a lot about how you choose to design it, from the salinity being freshwater, brackish, or saltwater, to the hardscape. Freshwater is generally considered to be easier to care for, and many hardy beginner fish, such as tetras, angelfish, and corydoras, are available for purchase. This tank will be freshwater. Brackish water tanks have a higher salinity than freshwater, and saltwater resembles an ocean habitat, allowing the keeping of coral reef species such as clownfish and tangs, as well as coral. Remember that saltwater tanks often need extra equipment, such as powerful lighting and protein skimmers, so keep this in mind. Additionally, it is important to keep the salinity and other water parameters constant. Building a tank can be done with multiple different types of materials. So plywood, acrylic, and glass are the primary materials that go into an aquarium, and choosing which one depends on your ability and experience. Remember, acrylic is one of the least forgiving, so make sure to plan and then plan some more. Build the tank more than once until you are sure that it is functional. Make mistakes and then learn from them. Build a stand out of wood or other sturdy materials to support the tank. Rule, when building a frame for a stand, it should be able to withstand four times the weight of the tank, including the water. A twisting stand is a major reason why tanks fail. The method of filtration will depend highly on the system. For tanks below around 50 gallons, a power or hang on the back filter is recommended. Smaller tanks can use an internal sponge filter. Canister filters are stronger and provide more media for mechanical and biological filtration. These filters are usually recommended for tanks between 50 and 100 gallons. Above that, special subsystems are required with numerous stages for efficient filtration. The sum system can provide areas for nitrifying bacteria to grow, which are essential for ensuring the proper conversion of toxic ammonia to nitrates, which can be used by plants. These sumps also provide places to add CO2 systems and atomizers, as well as heaters within the sump tanks. Remember, Joey says learn the nitrogen cycle. Do it. It could save your aquarium. Many types of substrate can be used for aquaria, including sand, gravel, and even volcanic soils and substrate for plant growth. Pick the one that best suits your species and tank requirements. Some tanks are best left bare bottoms for e ease of cleaning, breeding tanks, as well as not to cause irritation to the flesh of fish rubbing against the granules. Joey sometimes uses this strategy when keeping his stingrays. Some substrates can provide nutrients for plant growth. In this case, plants, soil, gravel, and sand were all used to create the scape. The hardscape means the hard decor of the aquarium, basically things like wood, rocks, and faux decor. This part of the tank setup is important as the hardscape creates the habitat for the life's livestock. For example, Tanganyikan shell-dwelling cichlids such as Neolamprologus multifasciatus and Simulus need snail shells in their aquariums for shelter. Other species such as reef fish benefit from reef life rock formations. Some fish such as rays prefer little hardscape, as when stressed they could injure themselves on sharp wood and rocks. Bear this in mind uh, for larger fish. In this tank, wood will be used as a place for spiky moss to be attached to, as well as provide shelter for schooling rainbow fish. Plants help maintain the health of the aquarium while providing both aesthetic and functional services. Based on the species of added plants, different intensities of light and CO2 diffusion should be considered. Some plants need no CO2 in low light conditions, while others rely on supplements, strong light, and high concentrations of CO2. In this tank, valcinaria and spiky moss will be used. Now comes the fun part, adding the fish. By now you should have thought about how different fish species would respond to each other, putting proper research into possible tank mates, water requirements, and care. Remember to only add fish after cycling the tank. You also need to acclimate the fish. Float the bag in the aquarium for 15 minutes, then pour the pet store water into another bucket while netting the fish. Place them in the aquarium. Remember, some species may need to be drip acclimated. 
Never keep them in a bag once it's been opened. Drip acclimation involves the slow addition of your aquarium water to the travel water of a fish at a controlled rate in droplets per second. This method lowers the stress response of fish being added to an aquarium with different water parameters than their original conditions. It is highly effective for sensitive aquarium species such as invertebrates. And now for the final look. Here is a 375 gallon planted aquarium complete with red rainbow fish and planted with spiky moss and valcinaria. It has a working multi-stage sump system and water pumps that allow for proper water circulation. That natural style is important for providing a home for these species. The fish are the star of the scape. Joey spends 10 to 15 hours a week working on his aquariums, including tank cleaning, feeding, and other maintenance. He also spends his time doing video filming, editing, and production. In his off time, he is researching for his next aquarium or spending time with his kids and family. You may be surprised to hear this, but Joey does all the maintenance and video work himself, including all the tank maintenance. Despite being a one-man show, he has made numerous weird and wonderful tank designs, from upside-down tanks, L tanks, to tanks made out of old televisions. Joey is a creative person, and his tanks showcase this. As a successful YouTuber and public figure, Joey's life has been on camera for the world to see for a while. He commonly gives keynote speeches at conferences and meetings, as well as meet and greets for fellow aquarists and tank enthusiasts. As a respected aquarist, he has helped many with their own aquariums and believes that education is essential. To help with this endeavor, Joey wrote a book, The Ultimate DIY Handbook for the DIY Aquarist. He has also been the head of multiple aquarium clubs in his community. For his amazing work, he has won multiple awards from YouTube. Now, let's hear what, how Joey deals with being in the public eye. I mean, when it comes to negativity, uh, it's the same as the positive. Uh, if a hundred people tell you how great you are, a lot of times I can get to your head. But on the flip side, it just takes one person to ruin your day and how bad a comment is. I mean, we've all seen on the internet and uh, we've all even got pissed off about something that has nothing to do with us. Um, you know, so it, it can be difficult to deal with like negativity is the thing is, is like when I turn my computer off or if I turn my phone off or I put my phone down, I'm just Joey until I go like out in public or something, then I might get spotted or whatnot. But my life is abundantly normal outside of the fact that when I go on the internet, lots of people enjoy what I do. In the aquaculture and ornamental fish world, Joey is unique. Not only did he DIY his way to monster fish tanks, beautiful aquariums, and an international audience, he also inspires and educates. His goal is to make the art of aquarium keeping more accessible for all. He wants his audience to become successful aquarists, even with common materials and non-complex scapes, as long as they are enjoying for themselves. Why is Joey unique? Because of his vision, accessible aquarium keeping and education, his goals, and how he communicates the art of aquarium keeping to the world. Through YouTube, he has educated and inspired millions. And plus, who could say no to those stingrays?